In this video, I have some tips for solving the first eight edges on your big cubes using the free slice method. Okay, so in this video, I'm gonna talk about solving the first eight edges on big cubes using the free slice method. Um, in general, first eight edges on big cubes is really, really dependent on your look ahead ability and ability to find pieces. Um, I don't use any super complicated techniques uh, using free slice for the first eight edges. Um, there are certainly some things that can help, but I, I generally feel like uh, trying to use complicated techniques in addition to uh, the difficult look ahead during the first eight edges is kind of bound for trouble. So I kind of try and keep things as simple as possible while staying efficient. So one of the first things that's really important in the first eight edges is using uh, pieces that are already solved. And this is something that I talked about in the intermediate tutorials as well, but I thought I'd just mention it again here. And that's that, you know, you don't want to be starting by, you know, looking at one piece here and then looking around the cube for all the other blue and yellow pieces. You want to do something like, you know, this, you got the white and orange, start with those because there's already two of those paired up together and, you know, look around for the others and then go ahead and solve them. So look ahead and the ability to find pieces quickly definitely improves over time, but it's important that whilst that's still developing, that you practice making good decisions and not panicking. And that's something that can be done um, earlier on in your, in your solving. So for example here, I would just go ahead and see these, have a brief glance around and hopefully spot this one and then start out solving. And also whilst I'm doing that, um, I was looking for the other white and orange edge piece, so the inner wing here, and I see that it's not here, nor is it on the top. So what I'll do is slice as I flip over and the other white and orange piece is back here. So I'll solve that. So the critical part of looking ahead in, uh, in first eight edges using free slice is being able to finish off the edge that you're solving without looking at the pieces that you're using. Uh, and I guess as soon as you find all of the pieces that you're using to solve an edge pair, so a group of edges, then your mind should kind of immediately shift gears into look ahead mode and looking for the next pieces. So for example, as soon as I see this white and orange piece back here, I'm immediately thinking, okay, I know how, I know exactly the moves I'm going to do, that I'm going to use to solve it. What should I look for next around the cube? And uh, try and kind of try and try to spot something quickly and then go ahead and solve it. So, you know, before I insert this using RUR prime, I see these white and green ones. And I also, as I'm doing that, probably see these ones. So then I would go ahead and potentially solve, you know, these ones because they're all in the top layer and they'll be reasonably easy to solve after that. In general, you want to try to avoid flipping moves where it's practical, but uh, definitely there are some cases where you can just go ahead and solve the edge using a flipping algorithm and that'll be, I guess, faster than trying to look around for other pieces. So here, I've got this one, this one, this one, and this one. So what I'll do is insert these two into the front, insert this one into the back. So this is something that's also very important is using back inserts. So R prime U prime R or R prime U R, things like that. And what I'll do here is slice, flip, slice back. And whilst I was doing that, I was tracking this white and blue one. So I can just do white R, uh, do R prime U R to put it in this spot, sorry, the white and green one to put it in this spot and then slice. So I did that entire edge without rotating the cube at all. I just did some back inserts and a flipping algorithm to build that entire edge in this front right slot, as opposed to, you know, inserting pieces all over the place, doing rotations and, and things like that. So one thing that's quite important when doing free slice is knowing when to pull the trigger and do a Z2 rotation. And they're not something that you should be, you know, super scared of, um, particularly on six by six and seven by seven, because there are so many more edge pieces because you need to group together four edge pieces. So there's a likely a higher chance that you'll need to do Z rotations, Z2 rotations to find uh, other pieces as opposed to uh, the five by five. Um, but for example here, let's say I've solved, you know, these ones, these white and greens. And the next thing that I see whilst I was solving that was, for example, this green and, uh, sorry, this red and yellow. So these two ones. And I see around the top layer, I don't have any red and yellows. And I can quickly scan, I guess, these stickers and these stickers and make an educated guess that I will probably need to use pieces from the bottom layer to solve my red and yellow. Now, what I could do is, I guess, tilt it this way 
and try and look ahead like this, but that's gonna be quite tricky. Um, and generally what I do is just do a full rotation, pull the trigger, okay, I found this one and this one. And there will be some situations where, you know, I don't see the red and yellow around here, but I don't really want to look in like completely at these back edges. So I just look here at these stickers and these stickers. I know that none of these are going to be red and yellow because there's no red or yellow stickers at all. And I know that potentially this one might be a red and yellow edge, but I'll probably need to rotate anyway. I will need to rotate anyway to find the other one. And they end up being here and here. Um, there are two sorts of rotations you can do. You can do like a, you can do an X2 rotation like this if you think that you're going to be using something from the back, or you can do a Z2 rotation like this. Um, the only, I guess, downside of the Z2 rotation is that it moves this, if you have solved this edge in the front right slot, it moves it into the front left slot. So you might want to do a rotation um, in order to continue solving. Um, in this case, I've got this one, this one, and I've got these two, which I need to attach to them. So probably what I'll do is do a rotation, insert this one like so, and then this one, because it came to the back here, I can insert with RUR prime like that. Then slice across and finish that off. So one thing that I use quite a lot in my solves is I do slice moves in a way that solves the edge on the six by six or seven by seven into this front right slot because that gives me, I guess, the most flexibility, uh, I think, in terms of inserting pieces for the next edge. So for example, in a situation like this, I have this uh, yellow and red, this one, and these two. And in order to put them here, I would do U prime and then Y D prime like that. And that takes some uh, some practice and getting used to being able to do things like, uh, for example, like this. Uh, if we have these two and this one back here, doing three U prime and four U with finger tricks like that. Alternatively, um, another way of doing, I guess, slice moves is rotating the cube and doing them like that, which is a little bit safer. And particularly if you're rotating uh, Z in a Z2 kind of direction, it can be handy to partially rotate, do the slice move and then finish the rotation. So you're slicing as you rotate. So one thing I briefly wanted to touch on was preserving edge pieces or groups of edges uh, whilst you're solving the first eight edges. And this is something that's useful, but I don't necessarily do it too often. I generally just solve one at a time and use look ahead to, uh, to go on to the next one. But let's say you have a situation like this where we've got, you know, these two edges down here, this one here. And for whatever reason, we know that there's these two in the back here. And so what we want to do is, you know, finish off solving this edge this group of edges, uh, the yellow and reds, and also preserve these ones. So we can just do like a double wide move across like this to insert this one and also preserve this. So solving this one, preserving this, and instead of just like taking this out into the top layer for use next time, uh, generally what I do is if I ever have something that I wanna solve or preserve and Either I'm able, I'm able to preserve it whilst inserting an, a piece for the edge that I'm currently working on. Um, if I'm able to do that, so insert this one and preserve this, then I will. Um, and if I'm unable to do that, then I'll probably, I probably won't, re won't preserve it because, for example, here two pieces is really nothing special. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll do it so that it's useful for the, the edge that I'm currently working on. And then, you know, whilst I'm doing this, I'm looking ahead for these two other ones and solve it. Another thing that I find really nice when doing free slice are situations where I have two gen solutions. So just R and U moves and slice moves uh, of, my, of my free slice. So let's say here I've got this white and red, white and red, white and red, white and red. Um, this kind of goes against the rule of, you know, you should start with things that are already solved. Um, but in this situation, this is one of the situations where I think it's really good and this solution is really, really fast to just go ahead and, you know, solve these two. And then notice that these two are both oriented in the same manner. So we have a two gen solution because both of these pieces have red on top. So we can just go something like slice across, insert this one, slice across, insert this one, and then slice. And that's something that's really, really easy to execute very quickly on a six by six and seven by seven. Another thing that it's important to think about is edge orientation. And this is particularly relevant for when it gets down to the last few edges of your first eight edges, um, because you will have solved groups of edges like 
you know, all of the white and orange and white and green. And let's say we're working on these white and red ones. Um, we kind of know that these ones and these ones are already solved. So the only edge pieces with white on them are going to be the white and blue ones and the white and red ones. And I'm looking for an outer wing and I see this piece here, which has a white sticker like this. And uh, based on this, I can tell that this is most likely going to be the white and red, um, either the white and red or the white and blue. Um, in this situation, what I'll probably do is actually just do a U2 move to move it to the front to check whether it's a white and red, white and red as opposed to doing a rotation like this to check whether it's a white and red. Um, I think doing U2 move is faster and then you can just go ahead and, and insert it straight away like that. Um, if there's a situation like this and you know this is white and red, then obviously it's better to just do R U R prime. But taking that risk is probably a little bit too much. And so, yeah, I think for situations like this, using U moves instead of uh, doing like a, a tilt or rotation is going to be faster for you to check whether it's the piece that you're looking for. One thing that it's also important to think about uh, in relation to avoiding flipping algorithms is uh, replacing, I guess, incorrectly aligned pieces with pieces that you're using to solve. So uh, I guess this is, this is just the example, one example of this. So we've got this red and, uh, no, not red, green and yellow here, green and yellow here, and they're, I guess, flipped in relation to one another. And we've got these two green and yellows here. So instead of doing, you know, you move, flipping this in place and then moving it across, we can just replace this one with these two by doing an R prime U prime R then slicing these across and then we have this one in our top layer which we can now insert correctly and use it to solve the green and yellow without doing a flipping algorithm. So most of the stuff that I've just described uh, also applies on the 7x7. Seven seven. Um, I guess on a 7x7 seven seven, you'll be dealing with more situations where there are flipped edges relative to one another. So we've got, you know, these three are good and then we've got these two which are flipped relative to these three. And I guess what some people potentially do is like slice this down to bring these two together and then either flip this or flip this. Um, I, but I guess to avoid that slice move, you can always just do stuff like, you know, U prime D like that to bring these here and then slicing back. So it's all about, I guess, using er like ergonomic, like good finger tricks um, in order to slice pieces to where you want them to be in order to flip them. So here's just another example, I guess we've got, you know, these two and this one down here and this one here and this one here. So the red and blue edge. And this goes along with what I talked about previously, which is that you can sometimes just uh, replace flipped pieces uh, instead of flipping them entirely using a flipping algorithm. So for example, for these two, what I can do is do R prime U prime R to insert this one, slice across there, and then use this one put it down here to take this one out of this layer. So instead of doing a flipping move entirely on this one and then slicing this across, I can just bring this one into the top layer, then slice. And now this is, I guess, another example of where slicing the correct way is, uh, is handy. So what I want to do is actually slice like this. So do a five U wide um, because this edge will now be insertable just using R U prime R prime. So for example, if I was to just do a D like that, then I would have to rotate in order to insert this edge. So I'd slice in that direction, insert, and then slice across. So this is something I talked about in the intermediate tutorials, but it also definitely applies for advanced cubers. Um, your immediate goal uh, during free slice is to try and store four edges onto one face and then uh, you won't have to do any Z2 rotations after that. Obviously there are situations where that's not entirely practical or where you you know end up with two on the top and two on the bottom, things like that, but uh, that should be something you're keeping in mind as you're solving you know the first edges uh, using free slice.